my retirement plan is failing. What do I do? What do I do, Josh? All right, let's talk about this. I get this uh, quite a bit, as a matter of fact. All right, so why or how, I should say, are you determining that your retirement plan is failing? Well, I ran a Monte Carlo, and it only says I have a 65% chance of success. All right, so let's dive into a bunch of going on in that. Let's dive into that. First, what is the inputs going in? I'm not going to get too deep in that right now, but the inputs going in, inflation, how long you're going to live, uh, your re investment rates of return, all these various things, uh, your standard deviations, all that stuff you got to determine as, a, uh, as an input. All right. Of course, the number one input is your expenses. What is your expenses going in and how are they going to change as you age that's the number one thing to determine when it comes to your uh, your monte carlo all right but let's say we have that and just for me i have six and a half percent rate of return on stocks two percent on bonds one half one percent on cash i have inflation at two percent i have cost of living adjustment on social security at 2.4 and i have health care increases at 5.5 lastly we do uh, revert back to the pre-tump tax law that was uh, in place before 2017 and 2026. Standard deviations are historically normal all right, relative to what they've been throughout history. So I think stocks is like 17% off the top of my head. I can't remember bonds and cash, but historical standard deviations, well below historical rates of return on investments, well below. And again, if you're gonna use normal rates of return on investments i would uh i would be hesitant or if an advisor is doing that i'd be hesitant to take that person seriously frankly um especially on bonds all right so be it as it may that's my inputs all right so now we know that we've established inputs uh then we got established expenses what's happening to your expenses well the vast 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 majority have expenses increasing each and every year with retirement at the rate of inflation that's fine uh, that's what most people have, so we'll go with it. All right, so then we say, okay, what are we getting? How are we getting these expenses to begin with? If it's 80% of your pre-retirement income, I would say that's silly. That's, that's, that's foolish. It literally is foolish, man. Don't do that. You got to get a better gauge. So if your retirement plan is failing, I'd say what we just talked about, your inputs, your, how long you're going to live too, by the way. You know, some people have to live it to 120, which is stupid. Some people will have you living to 95, which I somewhat take issue with. But how long are they going to have you living? All right. Some people won't have you living to your 78, which is, I don't really like that either. You know, I think 85, 90 is, is absolutely adequate. All right. Part two, we got to figure out what the, uh, uh, not only the historical rates of return, the historical standard deviations, what they're using for standard deviations. All right. So that's what we have. Now, part, then we just got to start thinking, okay. So they have your expenditures based on what precisely? 80% of pre-retirement income. Well, why? Well, that's what most advisors suggest. I, man, I could care two craps what most advisors say. That's freaking insanely wrong. It might be correct for you. I don't know. But dive into there, man. This is the most important aspect of your retirement plan. How much are you going to need? Don't just go off some freaking boilerplate off the shelf well, most retirees say, or most financial planners say that, I could care two craps about that. How much are you going to need in retirement? Now, the right answer says, I don't know. I don't know how much I'm going to need because I've never retired before. Okay. So we've established we don't know, which is still better than just default saying 80%. So let's dive into it. How much do you think you're going to travel? How much is your cable bill? How much is your mortgage? How much is your property taxes? How much is your health insurance? How much, how much, how much is your food? Take some time to figure this stuff out. Don't just sit there and say, ooh, it's 80% of pre-retirement income. That's just dumb, man. And if you're using retirement planning based on that and that alone, that's, that's silly. All right, so let's say we got all this knocked out and you're still showing a 65% success rate. You know, but Josh, that means out of 100 retirement plans, only 35, I mean, 35 failed. I ran out of money. Oh. Nothing could be further from the truth. What does the Monte Carlo say exactly? It says how many times you had liquid assets 
at your death. Those liquid assets could be anything from a dollar to a $10 billion. So 65% of the time you had liquid assets, mind you, liquid assets. Doesn't say anything about running out of money because we know for a fact you did not run out of the money. How do we know that? Because you have Social Security. Social Security will not run out. It's just not going to happen. Folks who say it is, I don't understand that, but you know, people like to be living in fear. I mean, look, I know my videos. When I show, when I do a video with a negative headline, that gets more views than when I do a video with a positive headline. I get that. People are more afraid of fear then they are hopeful about positive stuff. And that's just the nature of human nature. That's all there is to it. But at the end of the day, you're not running out of money. That's inherently obvious. So if running out of money is what defines retirement success, then you're at 100%. Now, part two of that, you might not have any liquid assets left. If that's what determining your success rate, well, that's different than running out of money. But don't mix the two. Don't say, I only have a 35 or 65% rate. I ran out of money 35% of the time. No, you did not run out of money 35% of the time. You just had to live off less. Now, you might say, well, I can't live on Social Security alone. Okay, well, that's different than run out of money, isn't it? Because that means we have to figure out a way to reduce our expenditures, but you did not run out of money. It's not like you got to go to the freaking breadline begging. You still got Social Security, which is another reason why delaying Social Security and at least to your full retirement age makes sense. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't listen to that advice. Uh, they take it early because they got to make sure it's there. But if running out of money is our big concern, uh, well, it's not going to happen. Now, if living um, with less income is a big concern, then rule number one would be delay taking Social Security. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Because A, you won't run out of money. B, you live on more money because Social Security is going to pay you higher benefit. Uh, all right, now part three of this. Uh, what, how are you living? If you have a house, if you have a car, if you have jewelry, if you have assets, believe it or not, some of those assets could probably turn into cash. Monte Carlo won't show you that. Monte, you could literally have three houses, one in the mountains, one on the beach, and one here in Georgia. And you're sitting there, and I guess you could have all three in Georgia, right? House on the beach, house in the mountains, one you know, in the suburbs. Monte Carlo doesn't show you those houses. It just shows you your liquid cash. It says you have a 35% probability of failure. Again, failure is solely liquid assets. But what if I looked at your portfolio and I said, dude, you got $2 million of real estate. Sell one of those suckers. So we know you haven't run out of cash, right? We know, I mean, look, I'm just using this for example. We know you got real estate, and what real estate be like me. We got a big fat house. Your kids, kids are grown. It's worth a hell of a lot more than what you, uh, than, it's bigger than you could possibly need anymore. So downsize that puppy or take a reverse mortgage. Uh, you're not, A, you're not running out of money. B, if you have other assets, you can always liquidate them in which to, uh, to generate cash so you can live on. See, we have to assume that your expenditures are staying stable in retirement or are they dropping like the vast majority of evidence uh, shows. So if your expenditures are staying stable, i.e., I'm taking $40,000 a year as my spending. I'm adjusting that each and every year with inflation. I retire at 65. Now I'm 90 years old and whatever $40,000 was adjusted over 30 years for inflation, that's what I spent. That's just silly. That's just dumb. Don't do that. Now, could that be you? Sure. Which is why you really want to do a plan, at least dive into the numbers every couple of years. Just say, okay, two, year, two years ago I was tracking. I spent a little bit more money than anticipated. Over the previous two years, what am I looking at now? Well, you probably need to cut back a little bit. All right, cut back. Hey, so if your retirement plan is quote unquote failing, dive deeper into it before you just throw up your hands and say, I'll keep going to my crappy old job because it's no one cares about your retirement like you do, my friends. Hell, you care a lot about more than I do. I'll tell you that right now. Yes, I'm you know, I consider myself a good guy in the business. You know, I appreciate when people hire me, I do my best for them. But at the end of the day, they're the ones who are going to have to live in retirement on their plan, not me. 
So you got to make sure you understand the numbers going in. You got to make sure you understand what the numbers coming out mean. And finally, you got to understand a failing retirement plan because your Monte Carlo number is only 65 or 42 is not a failing retirement plan. You haven't run out of money. First and foremost, you have not run out of money. And if the concern is that you're living, you won't have enough money to live comfortably on, well, heaven forbid, you take Social Security later. That's the easiest way to assure that you'll have more money to spend later on in retirement. Love to hear your comments on this. I will right, we'll see you.